Physics Notes, Unit 18B, but electrostatic charging, basically moving charges around. How do we detect and uh, create charges? Once again, you're not really creating charges, you're just moving them around. How do we move them around? Well, we have basically two types of materials. We have conductors and insulators. A conductor is a material that provides easy movement of electric charge, generally anything metal. Okay, all metals are basically good conductors. They're good conductors of electricity, they're good conductors of heat. Basically, when we say movement of electric charge, we're really talking about electrons 99.9% .9 of the time, because like I've said before, they're the loose, the loose particles that are orbiting the nucleus. It's hard to get the protons out of the nucleus. So when you have a conductor, the charge spreads out in the conductor. Not only does it spread out in the conductor, it spreads out on the surface of the conductor, of the metal but it does concentrate at the corners. I'm not gonna get into all the vector reasons for that right now, but that's an illustration of that right there, where we have, this is a metal, this is a conductor. It has to be a conductor. You can see the, the, the charge spreads out symmetrically, but it does gather at the points. And that's why basically like lightning rods are pointed so that you can discharge from that point or attract the charge to that point for a lightning rod. Uh, so things that are pointed can can get rid of or they can gather charge more readily than rounded rounded objects. Now over here on the left, well, let's talk about insulators first. Um, an insulator is a material that inhibits charge flow. The charge can get stuck on there, but it stays localized. Basically anything that's not metal, but good examples are wood, plastic, rubber, glass. But sphere A here is an insulator. All right. The charge, it could be like a balloon that you rub in your hair, and you rub in your hair in three different places, and the electrons get stuck there. Sphere B is a conductor. All right, now, once again, I like this final diagram over here when you put the charge on the outside. Basically, this conductor over here is missing electrons. That's why it's positively charged. And whenever we draw these diagrams, those symbols represent the excess charge. There's billions of other protons and electrons in this conductor. That's just the excess. Same thing in these spheres over here. These are the excess electrons. And once again, if I were to draw a sphere B, I would have drawn all the electrons out on the surface because on a conductor, a metal conductor, that's where they go. They go to the outer surface. Whether it's a hollow sphere, a hollow ball, or a solid ball, even if it's a solid metal ball, all the charge goes to the outside because they're getting as far away from each other as possible. You can leave the diagram the way it is. But whenever you see symmetrical charges lined up like that, we know it's a conductor, it's metal. Now, old school electric charge detectors. Now there's electronic detectors we can use now in sophisticated labs. We really don't use you know, electroscopes much except for basic demonstrations and, and old school, like just detecting basic charges. And, and they're, they're, they're nice because you can see a physical um, representation of charge actually being there and being moved around. Now, the basic model, I'll show you a couple of videos here. here here's the basic, I'm going to go down a little lower. Here's the basic model. You have a, a, usually like a ball or a plate, a, a metal ball with a metal rod, aluminum, brass, going straight down to a couple of hangers here. We have two pieces of foil or a lot of, the, the, the original ones were like gold foil because you can make gold foil really, 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 really thin and light because these, th these little leaves down here, okay, are real flimsy. They can, they can, they can pivot on where they're attached up here where I have my, cursor right now, but you'll see the video in a second. There's different variations of this. Sometimes they're in a glass jar, but there's an insulating cork right here where that, me that metal rod is a conductor and it's attached to the metal leaf. So all this, the, the, basically the electroscope is this middle part, this up and down part. There's other variations that you'll see in the video in a few minutes here where you have a metal ball going through a plastic or rubber cork uh, and then a lot of times this outside is metal, doesn't really matter that much, or glass in the case of some of these uh, foil electroscopes. And then all this stuff down here is metal. There's a metal pin and a metal straw and a metal holding rod. You'll see this in a few minutes. But over here now, this apparatus, this black apparatus, is what the, the, this aluminum or brass is here. There's a conductor, metal conductor. And the bottom little lines here represent a charged electroscope in this case, or at least a charge separated uh, situation. For example, in, in, in case number one right here, this negative thing represents 
probably like a piece of plastic, uh, like a PVC pipe or a piece of rubber that was rubbed with fur. Like over here on the bottom right-hand corner, uh, going down to the right-hand corner, if you rub rubber with fur or on your hair, like a balloon in your hair, the rod tends to pick up negative from the fur. So if you take negatives out of the fur, the fur, the, the fur becomes positive. So for every negative you take out of the, out of the fur, it becomes positive one, excess, and so forth. Anyways, if I take this negative rubber rod, plastic rod, rubber balloon, and bring it close, but don't touch this ball, okay? Now, it's a conductor. So what happens is the electrons that are up in that top ball, so to speak, now have moved down and pushed down. But actually, those negative electrons that are down here in the bottom didn't really come from the ball, but as an exaggeration, so to speak, if there's four extra electrons at the bottom, there's four missing electrons at the top, but the electrons from the bottom down here probably came from this middle stem, okay? And then electrons from this ball probably pushed into this middle stem, and then they pushed. So it's kind of like a chain reaction, like somebody at the back of a line pushing forward. So literally, it's not electrons that came all the way from the top all the way to the bottom, but they get pushed down. In this case, since they're, the, there's extra electrons down there in those leaves, and they're free to pivot, they, they push against each other because like charges repel, and they spread apart. If you were to remove this rod right here and bring it away, then the leaves would collapse and go back down. You'll see that in the video in a little bit here. But right now, this electroscope is not charged yet. They say it's got a polarization of charge. We'll come back to that definition in a little bit. But the net charge on this, on this electroscope is zero, okay, because I haven't transferred any charge to it yet. But an electroscope can't tell you what kind of charge you have, because if I take a positive rod, bring it close, but don't touch it. I haven't touched it yet. It pulls electrons up from this middle rod out of, out of the leaves. The leaves uh, become positive because you take electrons out of them. They still repel. So it acts the same way whether your, your approaching charged object is positive or negative. And you can't tell whether the, the rod that you're bringing in is positive or negative unless somebody tells you that. Same thing in number three here. Now, not, well, the difference in number three is somebody touched it. That's called charging by conduction, which we'll get down here in a little bit. It's already defined below here. If you touch it, then the electrons can actually transfer from your charged rod into the electroscope. Now, this electroscope is charged. There's actually a transfer of electrons onto that electroscope. And once again, if I bring this rod away now, it'll stay mostly like that. The leaves will stay separated once I even remove that rod. So let me show you a couple of videos on electroscopes. All right, we're going to show how this electroscope works. This is an animation. You have the metal conducting ball with a metal conducting rod with your leaves that can swing. They're chart, they rub this rod. Let's say it's negative. I don't know if it's negative. But if they bring it near the conducting ball at the top, if it's negative, it pushes electrons down, and these are both like charges, and they repel. Or it could have pulled electrons up. If that rod, that blue rod, is positive, it pulled electrons up. It would act the same way. So that shows you that it's detecting a charge on that blue rod. Now they're going to touch it. If they touch it, now it, if say it's negative, it actually transfers electrons by conduction. And if you remove the rod, they stay separated because now the actual electroscope is charged. So here's a different type of electroscope. It has like a metal straw that you can see rotates on a pivot. It has that same conducting material going up through the middle. It's got a round plate at the top. It's metal. He's rubbing that rod. It's probably going to be negative. Doesn't matter, it could be positive to act the same way, but he's going to bring that negative rod near that top plate, which you can't see. It pushes electrons down into that metal straw and that, that thing that holds the metal straw. It's a metal straw, not a plastic straw. So it gets repelled because that, that red straw has the same sign of charge, whether it's positive or negative, same sign as charge as that holder that's holding it vertical. The straw can rotate though because it's got like a pin through its middle. So that's a different style of electroscope detecting charge. And now he touched it. I think he touched it. can't see it from where you're sitting. But he transferred charge and it stays, stays charged. If he were to touch it now, he could discharge it by touching the top. Yeah, he could touch the top plate. You could discharge it. That would be called grounding it. Like he's a big object attached to the earth. He could take that charge off of there if he wanted to touch that top plate. All right, so I've so that last electroscope you saw was this electroscope right here. And I've already hinted at a lot of these terms coming up here at the bottom of this page. Conduction is charging something by touching it. 
This example number three is you touch that electroscope with that charged object. It transfers charge just by physical touch. If something's charged and you touch the next thing, the next thing picks up some of that charge. And if it's, if it's a conductor, it picks up a lot of that charge. If it's an insulator, it picks up a little bit of it. You can also charge things by friction. That was all the examples like down here in the far right. If you rub fur uh, on the, a rubber balloon or that original video I showed you with the balloon rubbing in the hair from the previous notes, that's charging by friction. Induction, technically, uh, in case number one here and number two, induction is basically charging something without transferring charge from the original. Like in case three, the electrons that are on here came from that rod up there. They had to, the rod had to have more charge. Here, the charge in these leaves down here is charged by induction, technically. The net charge is zero on this electroscope, but you never charge, those electrons did not come from the charging agent, so that'd be induction. Another idea, uh, it's, it's kind of not just um, unique to induction, it's, it's, it's a concept that is for anything, grounding something is when you touch something and you transfer the, the charge back to the earth or back to a very large object. If I'm a large object compared to an electroscope, if I, if I touched a charged electroscope like that last one, that last video we saw that was charged, if I came by and touched that ball, I'd be called the grounding agent. Even though those electrons might not go to the earth, they would go on to me because I'm so much bigger and it can take all those excess electrons if it were charged. Same thing with this electroscope right here. I could discharge that by grounding it, by touching it. So that term grounding refers to other things besides just induction. But it's a uh, term that's useful in induction. Now here are some examples of induction. And I'll show you another video in a few minutes here. It's a little tricky. Let's say we have, and once again, the idea with induction is you're not transferring charge from the original object. Here, the object is going to be a positive rod. You have two metal spheres, A and B. Diagram one right here on the left. Touching each other. They're not charged at all. Somebody grounded them, touched them. Make sure they're not charged. Now, if you bring a charged object, this positive rod, close, but don't touch it. So don't transfer charge from this rod to that ball A. But because it's positive and, and those two balls are conductors, it pulls the electrons to the left, which means they came somewhere from the right. So the ball B has, is missing some electrons. They didn't come from all the way over to the right, but they, there's a net movement of electrons to the left, leaving the right ball positive right now. So both of those balls are charged right now, but they won't stay charged if I, uh, if I remove the rod. They'll just go back to the situation in diagram one, I. But if after I have this rod, I keep the rod right there, keep the rod right there. Now I separate the two balls, the two spheres. So there's a gap here. Once there's a gap, the electrons don't like to jump that gap. They don't like to go through air. So what happens is ball B, all of a sudden, immediately, basically, the, the charge spreads out because it's so far away from the other ball, charge will spread out on a conductor. But the electrons still stay by this charged rod until you move the, the rod. So now you move the rod away and, and sphere A also has the charge spread out. But both balls, both spheres are charged by induction. No charge ever left the original object. So there was nothing that touched them. They just became charged and they're charged oppositely. Now you can also do a single ball. And here's how that's done with a single metal conductor. So these have to be conductors. These have to be conductors for this to work. So it's a metal ball. Same was true in the previous one. Those have to be conductors for that to work. All right, so you have an uncharged sphere. Bring in the charged rod. It pulls electrons over, having a net charge negative on the left, net charge positive on the right. You ground it with your hand, all right, because on the right-hand side it was positive, but it's, it wants to pull up more electrons. So it pulls some electrons out of your arm, out of your body. You're a big object compared to that ball, so you're a grounding agent. Something big compared to something small that can give or take electrons uh, as needed. So it puts the electrons on there. So the right-hand side of that ball now has been neutralized. So the the, these other electrons are still over here by this positive rod. And you take your finger away, and those electrons are still over here, diagram four. And then when you take the rod away, they spread out. So the ball is charged by induction. No charge ever left the original object, the original positive charge. Now, if that rod would have been negative, then the final state would have been positive over here. The exact same thing would have happened, and, you're, and you could have been the grounding agent. In that case, you would have taken the electrons off instead of put electrons on. 
all right? And then it would have been positive at the end. And the same thing is true up here at this previous one, this one here. If this would have been a negative rod, the two balls would have been charged, but the left one would have been positive, the right one would have been negative. Let me show you a little video on this. All right, charging two metal spheres by induction. They have to be metal, they have to be conductors, and they have to be on insulating rods. You can't allow the charge to leak to the ground by grounding. And there's three pluses, three minus here, but there's probably billions and trillions of pluses and minuses. This is just showing you that they're both neutral to start. There's no net charge on either one of these. So that's what they're trying to illustrate with a plus and minus there. All right, so what they're going to do is they're going to bring in a positive rod, and what it does, it tends to attract negatives. They're not going to touch. Don't touch. You're not touching either metal sphere with that charged rod. And when you bring it back away, nothing happens. They go back to their net neutral. Both are neutral because they're still touching each other. But if you want to charge these by induction, all right, what you do is you bring that close, you hold it there, and then you have to separate the spheres. Right, I'm going to have to pause this. We're going to separate the spheres here. All right, so we can say that they are induced. Okay, there we go. Now we're separating the charges. Now they're still kind of the two spheres. They're still, the charges are still kind of, well, the negatives are still by the positive, and they're still quite close together, so the positives are still quite a ways over there. But if you now remove the rod, okay, now they kind of come together because they're still close together. The negatives want to get back to the positives, but they can't get through that gap right there. Now if you separate the, the spheres a little bit further, the charges spread out on both of them. I know you can't see the orange one too well here, but the charges spread out evenly because charges spread out evenly on the outer surface of both of these conductors. They're charged by induction. All right. Before, before I talk about charge polarization, I've kind of mentioned it once or twice. I need to show you two more short clips, so hang tight here. Let me see if I can get these videos pulled up. And this video is from a site called University of Colorado FET. P-H-E-T, it's spelled up there. Some of you might have done this in high school, but it's a fun one. If you go to University of Colorado FET, edu sims and then there's chemistry and biology and physics and you can search around under kinematics or light and optics and electrostatics but here i'm going to take this balloon and it's showing you that's neutral right now it's got pluses and minuses the sweater is neutral and on the right here's a wall but if i take this balloon it's showing you that if you rub it on the sweater it picks up negative charge and if i let go of it right now it opposites attract it attracts to the positive in the sweater but if I bring it over by the wall, okay, the wall is an insulator, the balloon is an insulator. So the charge does not leave the, the balloon. It stays on the balloon. And the charge in the wall is still net zero. There's no charge that left the wall. But there's, in the wall, we say there's a charge polarization because some of the negatives get pushed back by all the negatives here. So even though the wall is neutral, so it's possible for something that's charged to stick to something that's neutral. In addition to opposite attracting and sticking, a negative always sticks to a positive. But a negative can stick to a neutral, the wall, okay? Because the balloon is so light, gravity wants to pull it down, but there's enough electrostatic force there, enough friction to keep it on there. But the wall is a still, we say the wall is polarized. It has more positive towards the front and more negative towards the back. So that's charge polarization. All right, so I went back to one of the beginning pages of a FET. So up here on the upper left, you type into your search bar, FET Interactive Simulations or FET University of Colorado simulations and I go to the physics ones and I, I only check this box a bunch you could check a bunch of other ones light and radiation quantum physics quantum phenomenon but if I uncheck that so here's the one I just did the, the sweater one with the balloon there's a bunch of other ones capacitors and other things that we'll be talking about later on circuits but down here, here's a fun one John Travoltage John Travoltage if you were in high school and your teacher did this for you it's a it's a fun one I'm going to do a little bit of it for you. You can. Um, I'm not going to play the audio for this, I don't think. Let's see if I can. And I'm going to talk over it. It takes a second to load it up. But it's charging by friction, by conduction. What you can do with this, there's John Travoltage. He must have, uh, they must have paid him or something to get his namesake on there or whatever. 
but his he's got a really loose knee. So watch this. If I sh if I rub it on the carpet and the, the audio actually there's some audio there. The electrons build up in his body. All right. So his knee his knee is really flexible. Like he can ooh ouch. But uh, keep rubbing, get some electrons on there. You can build up more. But eventually, if you bring his finger close to the door, this is called grounding, because the electrons don't want to stay there. Get close. So that's the shock you get when you touch that door. Now, sometimes you, you've had it happen, a little bitty shock, probably for you. Uh, I've, I've had this happen. But So it's just, if you actually put his finger close and just rub it, the electrons will just keep going out of his arm straight to back. He's saying Shazam, Bam, or something like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can do this on your own if you want. Uh, something about it that's kind of, kind of fun, I think. Anyway, John Travoltage. Charging by conduction, and then grounding to get to release the charge. All right, to recap a little charge polarization, this was the one I did right before John Travoltage rubbing the balloon on the sweater. The wall is polarized. They have charge polarization. It's a net charge of zero. That's indicative of charge polarization. The one, the one thing is charged. One of the things has to be charged. The balloon is charged. You can't have two things that are, neither one are charged. One of them's got to be charged. And then you have the charge polarization in the second object, which is a net zero charge, but the charge is separated. Water tends to be a polar molecule. The middle object here is the oxygen. And then the two hydrogens, H2O, there's two H's, one O. I call this the Mickey Mouse molecule because it kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. It's a very, water is an amazing molecule. An amazing, well, two elements, H2O. It's got so many interesting properties. But one of them is this idea of charge polarization, where one side of the molecule tends to be more negative. It's, it's a net neutral but it's polarized. The, the two hydrogens tend to be positive and the oxygen tends to pull the electrons. This is exaggerated, but it's the charge is separated, net neutral. And you can do a lot of fun things with this as well. Let me show you one more video, a lot of videos here. One more video that is kind of fun with this water molecule being polarized. All right, you can do this experiment at home. You take a a water uh, a sink and you have a small stream of water turn the water on very very slowly so it's got a small stream it's not dripping just beyond dripping so you have a small stream of water and then take a plastic cup or a styrofoam cup or a rubber balloon rub it in your hair rub it in your hair so you get a charge on your you could use a styrofoam plate can't use a metal plate because a metal plate is conducting you need an insulator styrofoam plastic even a plastic pen will work let me see if this will play you bring the charged object close. There we go. The charged object, okay, because the water is a polar molecule, the, the balloon is charged, say negatively. It's charging the plus, positive side of the water molecules, and it's enough to deflect the beam. It's really cool. I mean, you're like bending water with a charged balloon. You don't have to touch the water. In fact, if you touch the water, it kind of washes some of the charge away and it doesn't work as well. So, Charge polarization in the water molecule. All right, so the negative balloon was attracting the water molecules, specifically the positive side, because the water molecules then rotate in that beam and get attracted over because of the electrical force of attraction. Uh, one more thing I noticed here is that they call this charge charging by induction. You really haven't charged the wall. I guess while the balloon is there, it's you know the surface is charged. The surface is charged by induction, even though well, there's no charge transferring, but this is really more of an example of charge polarization than charging by induction. You're not really going to charge the wall here, but there is an induced charge or a separation of charge in the wall. That's better called charge polarization. Finally here, some important applications. There's a lot of other applications of electrostatics. Obviously, a lot of our electric devices that we have, computers, phones, have electrostatic devices inside them. One of them is called a capacitor, which we'll talk about in a couple units. But other um, devices, photocopy machines, Xerox machines, laser printers, smoke precipitators, electrostatic air cleaners. It talks more about these at length in the book. If you want to read a little bit more about them, of course, the Van de Graaff generator is used in all kinds of electrical research and for separation of charge. 
But a lot of fun things can be done with separated charges, electric and practical things like these, you know, photocopy and laser printers. We all, we all love to print things up. And thanks, thank goodness to people who have figured out how to use these principles in a in a practical way. All right, so that's creating charges, moving charges, understanding separation of charges, charge polarization, charging by induction, conduction, friction. Hope you enjoyed those videos. And now we will go to electric fields.